Have you ever been curious about how each part of an Arduino schematic works and why it's there? Understanding why these circuits were designed the way they are can take your project from just functional to optimized. Today, we'll take a quick look at the USB section, the Atmega 16U2 and 2560 microcontrollers, as well as the in-circuit serial programming circuitry. All right, let's start with the USB connector. It has four pins, one for power, one for ground, and a differential pair for the signal. This differential pair works similarly to how a microphone cable uses out of phase signals to cancel out any noise that may have been picked up by the cable acting as an antenna. On the power side, we have a resettable polyfuse. This is basically a fast acting circuit breaker that helps protect your computer in case of an accidental short circuit. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want my circuit to be capable of frying my computer's motherboard, so I'm definitely going to include this polyfuse in my design. The nice thing about the polyfuse is that you can reset it just by unplugging the USB. Once it's unplugged for a few seconds, the polyfuse will reset itself and you can plug your microcontroller right back in, assuming you've taken care of the short. Now let's take a look at the signal wires. You can see that there's a 22 ohm resistor in series with each of the data lines. These resistors are for impedance matching. Without them, the data signal can get reflected back up to the computer, which could cause some weird behaviors. So since this is crucial for signal integrity, I've made sure to include them in my schematic. Next, we have Zener diodes, which connect each line to ground. These diodes protect against high voltage spikes from static electricity by directing it to the ground. This helps prevent damage to the circuit and the USB host as well. Now, this is a simple and effective method for keeping our circuit safe from static electricity, but I'm gonna leave them off of my design for two reasons. Number one, the microcontrollers already have similar internal voltage spike protections, and then number two, Every USB connector has a grounded outer shield, so if we touch the connector, any static buildup is already being grounded. It would be difficult to grab the USB connector in such a way that would cause any voltage spike to happen on the data lines. So with this in mind, I'm going to opt out and simplify my design a tiny bit. The only other thing to note here is that there are a few decoupling capacitors for the 16U2 chip. If you've got a really clean power supply, you might be able to get away with not using them, but I'm not gonna risk it. I'll just keep all the decoupling caps in my schematic. Now let's look at the in-circuit serial programming section of the 16U2 microcontroller here. The in-circuit serial programming interface or ICSP is the method that we'll use to load the firmware into the Atmega 16U2 chip. So we'll use a spare Arduino as a programmer. Now, if you're not familiar with ICSP, it provides a way to program the microcontroller directly. We need this because the microcontroller comes blank from the factory. It doesn't have any firmware pre-installed to help it know how to communicate with the USB. So we'll load that firmware onto the blank chip using the ICSP header. Every ICSP requires six pins, three for data transfer, two for power and ground, and the last one for resetting the device. The reset pin plays an important part in programming each chip. I'm not gonna go into detail here, but each component in the reset circuit is necessary in order to program our devices reliably, so we won't deviate from this design at all. Before we move on, let's quickly recap. So, so far we've covered the USB input circuit and the ICSP programming, both of which are crucial for our project. So now let's look at how we keep everything running smoothly with a reliable clock source. The USB protocol requires an oscillator running at about a minimum of eight megahertz with a high degree of accuracy. Uh, the Arduino uses a 16 megahertz oscillator, so we'll just stick with this for our design. The oscillator circuit includes two load capacitors that work in conjunction with the crystal to provide a stable frequency source for the Atmega 16U2 chip. There's also a resistor used in the oscillator circuit here. It helps the microcontroller start up properly when power is first applied. It may not be strictly necessary, but leaving it out could lead to unreliable startup behavior, so I'm going to include it to avoid any potential issues. And that's all it takes to create a simple and reliable clock source for Arduino. Moving on to the Atmega 2560 chip. Most of what we've already looked at will be familiar here. We've got some decoupling capacitors between our voltage rails that we'll want to keep close to the chip. We've got another ICSP circuit. It's very similar to the one for the 16U2 chip, but it's got an added capacitor. 
Uh, this is necessary for the 16U2 to trigger a quick reset of the 2560 during programming. No change is needed for our design here. You may have noticed the AREF bypass capacitor. Since I'm not using any analog inputs for this build, we don't need it. I'll leave that off my design, but we do need to keep all of the power supply bypass capacitors, as I mentioned previously. Now, the serial transmit and receive pins each have a 1K resistor in series between the 16U2 and the 2560 chips. These serve the same function as the small 22 ohm resistor we talked about in the USB section that we discussed earlier. One thing that is different from the 16U2 is the oscillator. The circuit for this 2560 chip uses a ceramic resonator instead of the crystal oscillator that we use on the 16U2 chip. The circuit is basically the same, but why the change to a ceramic resonator? Well, the difference between a crystal oscillator and a ceramic resonator is just a matter of accuracy and cost. Now, the 16U2 chip needs a high accuracy crystal oscillator to keep it within the strict timing requirements of the USB protocol. But the serial communication from the 16U2 to the 2560 doesn't require the same degree of accuracy. So this is an easy place to reduce part costs a little bit. If you decide to use a ceramic resonator, be sure to check out the data sheet though, as some resonators already include the load capacitors internally, so you don't need to supply your own. And like the crystal oscillator, the resistor here will serve the same purpose in getting the resonator up to speed quickly once power is applied to the circuit. So we'll leave that as it is. Have you had similar experiences with building your own projects? Let me know in the comments how you approach power protection or programming your microcontroller. I'd love to hear what worked best for you. Thanks for following along with this walkthrough of my custom G1000 project using the Arduino Mega. We've covered a lot from the USB input circuit to ICSP programming and how each component plays a crucial role in making the system functional and optimized. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below if you have any questions or suggestions. Also, be sure to check out the Arduino from Scratch blog series linked in the comments for even more detailed information. So that's it for today. Stay tuned for more updates as we continue to build the custom G1000 cockpit together.